Hello everyone and welcome back to the Zodcast. This is going to be episode number 24. And if you can see the screen, that is a uh, shot of my new channel on Subscribestar. That's going to be a uh, a paid bonus material site and it is $5 a month, but I promise it will deliver. I'm going to start out with a really deep dive into the Zodiac Killer and uh, forensic linguistics. So that should be really good. Uh, having to reach out to people, experts, and this kind of thing, and uh, really do some heavy, heavy, deep dives. But uh, don't worry, this channel is going to still be going strong, and I'm going to do more and more on it. So uh, definitely stay tuned, and also be on the lookout for the new uh, video coming up on the Zodiac Killer channel. I understand that the uh, next suspect profile on that channel is someone very near and dear to me. And if you could only guess who that is. And also go check out on YouTube a video, an interview with Ned from Black Box Online Radio over on the Mystic Drop. So I'll put a link to that as well. Uh, so you can go see Ned's interview over on uh, a show called The Mystic Drop. I think that guy, uh, the host, is from Australia. If you look at the screen, that is uh, the Concerned Citizen card. That's one of the things I want to get into a lot on the other channel, really deep dive into the linguistics and stuff like that where uh, this says a slip of the tongue, of course. Uh, Cheney says that phrase in the uh, interview with Tom Voigt, stuff like that, but really, really detailed, uh, you know, from the experts. And I'll, I'll let them, whatever they say is, you know, for better or worse, if it works for me or not, it's going to be presented uh, totally fair on that bonus channel. Anyway, I've been getting these correspondences from uh, my new friend Tony, and he's out of the Sacramento, California area, and he wrote this. He put... I think you believe, as I do, that the spelling mistakes in the Zodiac letters are not mistakes at all. They are clues or inside jokes. Yes, I do agree with that, Tony. So this immediately got my attention. Tony goes on to say, One of the letters is signed a friend with a line over the end. The E and the N don't look much like the E and N. The line over the end tells me to turn them over. The word you get is PB numeral 1. PB numeral 1 is a type of mechanical engineering diagram. What are the chances that Cheney knew about or worked with PB1 diagrams? Pretty high, I'll bet. Tony. Uh, absolutely, I agree with that, Tony. I'm not sure which exact uh, correspondence uh, you're talking about that was signed that way, but uh, there's lots of uh, hidden signatures for uh, mathematical signatures in the Zodiac stuff, of course. Uh, I think I put a lot of that out in my very first video on YouTube about the symbols and some of the terminology the mechanical uh, engineer would use, like the bus bomb diagram. Why would somebody with no inclination towards uh, you know, being mechanical at all draw a bus bomb diagram? Because they were mechanical, that's why they would. So here you go, a PB1 um, copolymer grade says standards applicable to the mechanical performance of polybutane 1 piping systems. Well, of course, uh, Don Cheney was a, a mechanical engineer who specified in pipe stress uh, analysis. So there you go, PB1 piping system. Sure, Don would have known what that was. There's his uh, yearbook photo from Cal Poly Pomona where he was studying to be a mechanical engineer. He had actually been practicing as a mechanical engineer as soon as he graduated from Bakersfield Junior College before he went into the Air Force in 1957. But Tony was also sending me some, some other clues, as it were, uh, with mechanical engineering terms that were popping up in the ciphers, including the 408 and the fairly newly deciphered 340 cipher. And let me read this real quick. One of the words I want to focus in on here is, uh, and this is the exact translation when the three gentlemen broke the 340 cipher a year ago or so or just under a year ago, it says, um, have enough slaves to worve, W-O-R-V. -W of course, Zodiac meant work, and it's obvious how you can fill in all these words knowing what they meant because there's enough of them there, but it actually translates to W-O-R-V. And I think that could be a clue by the Zodiac. And this is why. Uh, here is a mechanical part that has to do with piping systems. It's called a number four flange mount rotary gear pump, W-O-R-V. And uh, this is something that I've, I've looked into, and it's been around a long, long time, and that is called the W-O-R-V. That's not misspelled. It's not supposed to be pump work. It is W-O-R-V. So that actually is a word uh, pertaining to this particular rotary gear pump, and this is used in different piping setups. So, of course, you know, Don's background is, is in pipe engineering, 
uh, within mechanical engineering, specifying pipe engineering. Here's another uh, ad here. It says number four, flange mount, rotary gear pump, WERV, W-O-R-V. So that is a, uh, a piping mechanical uh, part there. So Don would have absolutely known what one of those was given his uh, education and background. So I thought that was really interesting. And here's another one coming from uh, actually the uh, 408 cipher, and this is sent by Tony as well. And you see where this is the exact translation of it. I think this was Don Harden's translation or, or the final one that got vetted out. But it says, uh, it will become my slaves. I will not give you my name because you will try to. He, mean, he means slow down here, but it's uh, got translated as S L O I. And Tony came up with that that was a measurement used by electrical and mechanical engineers as a unit of measurement. And uh, I also found out that SLOI it seems to be part of the, the computer language Fortran, which is used in pipe stress analysis uh, very early on. There was a 1973 book that mentions it, of course, that cipher is older than that, but uh, I also saw where that was a, a, a command or something in Fortran used as early as the 60s, so uh, it could be either one or both, I don't know, but there's uh, this what Tony put, he put SLOI is a measurement used by electrical and mechanical engineers. He also mentioned collecting of plates below, I'll get into that one later, but this is a shot of uh, a, a Fortran code, and you see here, I'll focus in on here, one of the codes or, or values or something like that, I don't know computers that much. Uh, one of them you see there, number B equals S-L-O-I-P-H-I. -I, and uh, I know that has to do with uh, this computer language that was used in pipe stress analysis. So lots of clues out there. I think he was, Zodiac was definitely hiding uh, what his profession was and what he knew about. Here, read this one real quick. It says, a Fortran program for the calculation of stresses. Of course, that's what pipe engineers did was calculate stress on pipes. Uh, which makes me think of Zodiac saying he was crack proof, but this was by W.G. Dodge in 1973. Of course, that came after the cipher, of course, but I think it was being done before. Uh, curve pipe, pipe elbows, piping design, stress. You'll see SLOI down there, 361. I'm not sure what the value means, but uh, has something to do with the uh, computer program Fortran that was developed in the 1950s. So I thought this stuff from Tony was fantastic. Keep it coming, Tony. And if anybody else ever runs across any of this kind of stuff, please send it to me. I love getting it and uh, giving credit for it and everything else. This is really good stuff. I forgot one more last one that Tony reminded me of. You know, there was a Zodiac correspondence that had the term uh, FK. What is the price on my head now? And uh, Tony suggested that could stand for fresh kills. And that's a term that hunters would use. Obviously, Don Cheney was an avid big game hunter. So that might have meant something to him. I don't know how that fits in the, how, you know, how that, that Zodiac correspondence was written out. But this was a gym somewhere that was called Fresh Kills Fitness. And notice the logo over there on the left. Obviously a gun sight. So I thought that was kind of neat. I forgot to mention at the beginning of this that the intro music again is uh, Russ Ballard and Voices. And I do not own the rights to that, but uh, I liked it. So I used it again for this particular Zodcast. So another thing I wanted to mention in this particular episode has to do with the uh, Lake Herman Road shootings of David Arthur Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen. There is a picture of them there. And this is going back again to the uh, troth that I called the video. His name was Arthur Lee Allen. And it's about the part where Don Cheney is telling the story about how Arthur Lee Allen's telling him how he wants to be the Zodiac Killer on New Year's Day, 1969. And he's going to call himself the Zodiac and he's going to uh, kill couples on Lover's Lanes. And then afterward, he uh, takes Don Cheney through Blue Rock Springs Park and tells him where he wants to kill a couple there. And then he comes back around uh, up Lake Herman Road. Well, of course, I like to point out when Don's telling this on the video, he catches himself and realizes when he's telling this that uh, Lake Herman Road has already happened on December 20th, 1968. So Don has to pivot really quick and talk about how uh, that that murder had already happened. Like uh, Lee starts going back into past tense and this kind of nonsense. This is Cheney being intelligent, knowing he's the killer and he's covering up his tracks. So... Uh, there's a picture of Don from the video. His name is Arthur Lee Allen. I don't want to read that comment on the bottom. That's why I added it. It's from Stacy Weinrich. It's two years old, but I've never seen it before. She says, Cheney was totally involved. He basically has told on himself all throughout this video, and no normal person would hang out with a guy 
talking the way he says Alan spoke. Uh, great comment there from Stacy. Of course, it's two years old, but there's tons of comments like that about Cheney and, 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 and some of the other people that appeared in that video, too. It's it's kind of crazy, but it's all about Arthur Lee Allen, but you come away thinking how weird the people were that were in the video. But going back to my point, Cheney talks about Arthur Lee Allen taking him over to Lake Herman Road after the fact, and that would have been on New Year's Day, 1969. Well, of course, uh, Betty Lou Jensen and David Arthur Faraday were killed there just 12 days prior on December 20th, 1968. So does anyone really believe that Don Cheney went to that site and uh, there was nothing there then? Was did, I mean, I, I don't know what it looked like that many days. I know a couple of days after you had the, the line for the bodies that were there. Uh, they were both there dead. Faraday was closer to the, the, the Rambler station wagon and in... Uh, Betty Lou managed to run a little bit, got shot in the back, but there had to have been, 12 days later, there had to have been some indication that people were murdered there, and that other than the news, and we'll get to that, but here's a picture of the turnout at Lake Herman Road. It's just a little small turnout on the outskirts of Alejo, and it's actually incorporated into Benicia, California, but look at that. It's a small, small area, so if Don is there with Arthur Lee Allen just 12 days later, standing in that area you're looking at now. Wouldn't there be something left, maybe uh, a police outline? I know it doesn't rain too much in California, so was there chalk still there? Was there any flowers left where the where the station wagon was, where these people were killed? I assume there was. I mean, I see where accidents happen nowadays or car crashes, and it's loaded with flowers and stuff or a cross by the road. I don't know what was there 12 days later, but you think something would have been there. So it just shows how unbelievable Cheney's story is and he's, that he's making it up. There's a, an aerial shot of it back in the day of the turnout at Lake Herman Road. You can just see how small it is. And go back to that video and watch Don Cheney talk about that. And he catches himself. He probably wishes that he never even brought that up where he comes back around Lake Herman Road and Lee's telling him what he'd like to do to some couple there, and it's not pretty. He, You know, Cheney has to add that line, and it wasn't pretty. I mean, that just gives you some insight into him. Of course it wasn't pretty. He's going to kill him, Don. Uh, you know, you're giving yourself away, in my opinion. There's that small little area. So nothing was there. And then going back to the fact that this murder of this young couple from high school was all over the news in that area. No, you probably could not have missed it. It was in every major newspaper in the days after that murder. This is just 12 days later that Don is talking about this, uh, being out there with Arthur Lee Allen because he's lying. No doubt about it. He wasn't there. He's making this all up. And then here's another picture from the actual uh, murder site. That is an actual picture of Faraday's Rambler. Uh, I'm sure he borrowed it from his parents, and there's there's blood on the ground. I guess that's that's uh, David uh, Arthur Faraday's. The out you can see the outline of the body, and uh, the glass is shattered from the from the gunshots. They said there were some uh, one or two warning shots fired before they were actually gunned down, and of course they both died. Betty Lee was killed pretty instantly. I think uh, Faraday lived for a little while, but was already dying. He never gave any kind of description. I don't think he spoke at all. Uh, but there's, you know, the ground, the blood. So 12 days later, you're telling me nothing's there when Don's standing there with Arthur Lee Allen, giving him the story and people watch that video. Like Don has any credibility. He just doesn't. He, they filmed that documentary in 2006. It came out in 2007. Of course, Don died in 2009. Remember, this was all about revenge against Allen and this, uh, him touching Don Chaney's daughter's bottom back in the day. Alan's been dead since 1992, and this is being filmed in 2006. You think he would let it go by then? But I guess Don got, you know, uh, a hotel stay for doing this and a continental breakfast. I don't know, but uh, it doesn't make any sense. See, there's a shot right there. I think that's where uh, uh, Betty Lou Jensen's body was found. It's covered right there. There's blood by her. The blood a little further up, I think, is uh, Faraday's. <laughs> And you think that something would have been there 12 days later. It just shows you that Don makes a mistake in that video. There's another shot of it there. It's, it's, uh, uh, the tire marks from the car. You have David Verity's body was here where the yellow is. And then on the right, you see Betty Lou Jensen was right there where this, I guess that's a police car or something doing an investigation where the white one is. It shows you how far she made it. She was trying to run or, you know, away and she got shot in the back and uh, fell dead right there so it's just another thing to bring out that I, I sometimes forget is how small of an area that is 
and how Don Cheney talks about standing there. And people still give him credibility, especially people that believe Arthur Lee Allen was the Zodiac killer. And Allen's a better suspect than most. Of course, you put him with Cheney and they're invincible because of the circumstantial evidence. There's a more modern photo, so you get a little bit better idea how small the uh, turnout is on Lake Herman Road. And some of the greenery there, of course, uh, it's changed a lot in the years. But it's still a really small area. So it's just one more thing that just shows that Don is making all this up. Inserted himself into the case, and he's just lying. That's why the guy is an habitual liar. Here's a, one of the articles that came out. Teen couple on first date shot to death. Vallejo, you know, two Vallejo teenagers killed on Lake Herman Road. You're not going to miss this stuff in the news. Here's another one. Friends quizzed in slaying of teen peer near Vallejo. Look how big that cutout is uh, in the newspaper. You're just And there was no way you would have missed it. So go back and watch that and wonder to yourself, why is this guy in 2006 telling these wild tales still? Alan's been dead since 1992, and here's Cheney just spinning it and spinning it. In 2006, uh, you know, I guess he's you know, just got to keep this story alive. So it just doesn't doesn't make any sense he was he planned to do this from the beginning he inserted himself into the case uh just like uh dennis raider did with uh, btk you know he's a classic guy he created the zodiac he wanted to keep keep it going he